Wuhu! Zillion.com Neue Domain, wisst Bescheid. Die alte IP 149.202.137.134 ist noch intakt, aber Zillion.com geht jetzt auch als Domain für den Lasergurkenden Server. Ich habe ein bisschen off camera hier schon gebastelt, ähm, weil sich das einfach zu sehr zieht mit den Aufbruch Preparations, bis man mal loskommt hier. Das ist ja der Wahnsinn. Ähm, genau. Ich habe auf jeden Fall verkackt, meine, meine Rüstung zum Charten, also Glass Protection und so ein Crap, ich wollte eigentlich Unbreaking. Ähm, ja, wo, wo kommen denn die blöden Knochen hin? Hier hin. Okay. Ähm, genau, und dann äh, würde ich sagen, geht es jetzt langsam echt mal los. Äh, ja, eigentlich braucht man noch ein Schwert. Was ist denn das? Diamant. Ja gut, Diamantschwert hält wahrscheinlich auch noch ein bisschen. Äh, obwohl so ein Looting Unbreaking 3 Schwert wäre schon krass. Was kostet denn der Spaß? 10! Okay. Gut, dann gibt es noch ein Schwert. Ähm, ja, ich hoffe, ich verrecke nicht gleich. Und ähm, dann auf jeden Fall noch ein Boot. Irgendwas Wichtiges habe ich hier noch vergessen. Kann man ein bisschen Essen mitnehmen. Und dann äh, will ich mal sagen, geht die Reise los. Ähm ja. Ja, oder? Also, ich habe wahrscheinlich irgendwas Offensichtliches noch, noch hier gelassen. Man kann natürlich immer noch ein bisschen Kabel mitnehmen. Echt eine praktische Sache. Okay, dann äh, let's go. Ich denke, die Richtung war nach hier. Und das sieht gut aus. Okay. Ja, äh, tschüss, Base. Ähm, auf geht's in ferne Länder. Und ja, immer hier auf. Äh, minus 700, naja, Nähe 0 äh, auf der Z-Achse. Ne? Das ist die Z hier hinten. Richtung meines Infinity. Dann, ähm, genau, dann geht es los. Und wir fangen gleich an, hier Pico CTF 2018 zu pumpen. Mal wieder ein Klassiker von John Hammond, äh, der diesmal Bufferflow 1 und Herz zwei macht. Ich habe keine Ahnung, wieso Herz ein deutsches Wort ist. Es steht wahrscheinlich für irgendwas, was ich kennen sollte, aber ich habe keinen Plan. Ähm, dann let's go. Hey YouTube, John Hammond, Pico CTF 2018. Buffer Overflow 1. Okay, now you're cooking. This time you can overflow the buffer and return the flag function in this program. Sweet. We're given the program and the source code. We can download it. I've already W get it, but we'll have to run on the shell server so we can actually receive their their flag file just as we've done before. So let's go check out what we've downloaded here. We have the source file, so let's go vuln.c, check it out. It will define some macros here to kind of have a buffer size and flag size. We have a win function that will just print out the flag file. Okay, looks like that's how we can get the flag. And the vuln function is just running gets, which we know is a very dangerous function. We can check out man gets if we wanted to. Man gets. And it says never use this function because it has significant security problems. Sets a buffer up, raises our privileges so we can run on the server and get the flag, and then it runs the vulnerable function. So it'll jump to an address, and that's pretty cool. You can see this gets return address there. So that's me. Let's go ahead and try and run this function and see if we can work with it. Oh, it's Let's mark it as executable. Fortune Pickaxe gar nicht dabei, okay. Hm. Vuln, please enter your string, awesome. And it says, okay, time to return, and it will jump back to where it expected to return to in the program. I could write, please subscribe, or whatever stupid stuff, but we do want to try and overflow this, right? Uh, given the actual buffer size, so 32 characters. You can see I entered a crap ton of A's, and it says, okay, time to return, fingers crossed, we're jumping to this location. So if you didn't have this output, 
you can run dmessage and then actually get the very last couple lines of it. And you can see where your psych fault is happening and how much you've actually overflowed EIP or the instruction pointer. So you're overflowing the return address, as you've seen on the stack. We break through uh, the local variables that we're receiving. We're going to end up overriding EBP and we're gonna end up writing, overriding the return address, so EBP plus four in the stack, on the stack frame. So once we have a return hmm. address controllable, that way we can jump to whatever function we want. Let's so yeah, let's go ahead and try, run to, and try and return to the win function. So first we need to know where that function is. And I'm going to use read elf tag s to just view symbols on this binary here. And we can see we do have a function called win and it's at this location. So just as you saw when we ran it, when we ran vuln without anything big, we'll just jump to a location back to main. Uh, or location where we were in main, we can also jump to the very start of win. And it's that, that's exact same kind of style where the constant is in the binary. So we can just set that in little endian format and then go ahead and try to actually jump to it. But we need it in little endian format, right? So you can do this with Python or you could just kind of do it by hand. But Python with the struct module, which is installed by default, you can use struct.pack with a little endian, so less than sign, and a capital I for injure, and then we'll supply this as a hex number, and you'll get some information like that looks kind of random when you have it displayed in the terminal, but that's because it's just hex bytes. So if I print out the representation of it with repr, you can see it's the backslash x and location in, in hex. So that's cool, right? Let's go ahead and try and find where our offset is or where we can go ahead and overflow this and actually run the win function. So we would go ahead and Python text C, where is that print statement? Let's also do print A times, say we know our buffer is like 32, so let's go maybe like 36 or 40. And let's add on that string. And hmm. let's pipe that into home. And it says, okay, we're jumping to this location. Maybe we didn't override it just enough. 44. And we jumped straight to the location that we wanted to. And we know that because it's trying to cut out the flag file. If, since we're testing locally, if we wanted ah, to, we yeah. could do, we could create our own does. fake flag. And I do this a lot. I'll be like, John, please subscribe. Or like, John wins. Or like, John got the challenge yeah. or whatever. And, and we will print out our local fake flag. So that's a cool way to do it. Now that we know we have this payload that will work, let's go ahead and try and connect to the server. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a simple SSH script that will get me to where I wanna be every time. I won't have to try and like SSH the same command every time. I just want 2018 Pico shell. And let's create in the above directory just an SSH.SSH script. I still wanna be able to enter my password. Well, I didn't want that. I wanted this. Hmm. SSH, John Hammond, YouTube, there. And let's keep this back in our clipboard. Mark that as executable. And now that we can connect to it, we'll enter our password. We're logged in. Let's get this just kind of in our directory or just output. So when I go back to get to the actual problems page, I can copy and paste it pretty easily. Let's get to buffer overflow one and we'll get to this location on the file system. We'll just copy and paste it. So let's CD over there, right? Now let's Whoa. run the same command that we had. It says, okay, time to return, fingers crossed. We have overflowed and we told the return address to overflow and instead be our win function. And it pumps out the flag because we've called the win function just like that. Addresses are easy. Slick. Let's do that. Nano flag dot text. Save it. <laughs> Let's remove our cheesy please subscribe file. Submit it. And that challenge is now complete. What a win. Let's mark that as complete. Buffer flow one. Oh, you have got kind of Sweet. Uh, I am just going to solve the next challenge because it's pretty simple. 
Um, it's the identical, same thing, like same solution as the last Hertz challenge. Hertz is another substitution cipher, right? Uh, Just as we saw in the last one, so let's yeah, directory Hertz 2. <laughs> substitution cipher, okay. Hertz Good to 2, go ahead and netcat to it, get this string, and we can, again, just slap this in quick quip, and it works just fine for us. We will get the flag pretty easily. Substitution ciphers are easy. If you wanted to, we can get every other part of it and mark that at, and like say what that is. Yeah, and then it's it been should good. know rest of that string that we should shelter. be able to figure out what those question marks are because the clues will allow us to just say pico ctf substitution ciphers are too easy let's solve it now and then now that it's able to figure out all those letters it can get the rest of the flag kind of a cool trick stop refreshing so i can actually highlight this oh my goodness I hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> I hope these are entertaining as a, as educate as entertaining as they are educational because I'm an idiot. That's all. All right, let's do nano flag that text. Save it, and we're good. Hertz two complete, and that's that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of buffer overflow. Some cool stuff. I've done those a lot before in Ryan CTF, Ryan Nicholson CTF, and other competitions. So there are plenty of videos on it, but that's how we could just run through it for Pico CTF. All right, quick shout out for the people that support. Okay, uh, sorry, that's you, my supporter, Skippel, John Hammond, and for I'm sorry, any supporter. Um, yeah, but can walk. <laughs> uh, dann, yeah, was is auch mit dieser Episode? würde ich sagen. Und wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge. Oh mein Gott, diese Dörfer, die sind mittlerweile so unselten. Ich weiß noch, früher waren die mal selten und dann hat man sich gefreut und dann hat man auch was gefunden in dem Dorf. Und mittlerweile ist da nur Crap drinnen. Oder ralle ich da irgendwas nicht? Und das ist einfach nur Waste of Time, diese Dinger. Dann schauen wir da hier noch kurz rein in der Folge. Ich mach mal keinen wilden Cliffhanger, weil es eh nur Trash ist. Ähm, genau. Ist hier was? Ist hier eine Schmiede? Nee. Ja gut, den Golem kann man farmen für die zwei Eisen oder was auch immer. Ah. Ja, ja, da kommen die Gefühle hoch mit der alten Base. Bei uns ist immer so ein Golem gespawnt. Mit absolut OP am Mending Rüstung. Und Mending Schwert hat man ja nichts an Ressourcen zu verlieren, wenn man gegen so ein Teil kämpft. Und da hat sich das schon gelohnt, die zwei Eisen immer zu holen. Alle, was weiß ich, was der kam, alle 10 Minuten oder so. Aber jetzt, wo ich so zerbrechlich bin und ich mein gesamtes Team und meine Base und alles eigentlich verloren habe, äh, ja, macht das, macht das nicht mehr so viel Sinn. Also ich denke, das ist ein guter Cliffhanger. Für